and welcome back to Cheeky Crypto. Today, guys, we're going to be jumping down into the world of Bitcoin, taking a look at the most recent price action, what I think is likely to happen next, and all that wonderful stuff. As I get into today's video, if you do find it useful and informative, smash that like button. I do appreciate that. If you are new to the channel, then why not go ahead and subscribe? If you do tap the bell and select all the notifications, you will be kept up to date with all the video content that we do here at Cheeky Crypto. If you haven't yet joined us in Discord, what are you waiting for? Check it out. Linked in the description down below. It's a fantastic community talking crypto 24 seven. It's completely free and I don't think you'll be disappointed by what you find down there. So why not go ahead and check it out? Let's waste no more time though. Let's jump right down into today's video, starting things off with the one hour time frame. So here we have a Bitcoin paired up with USDT. We're using the BitGet spot exchange on the one hour time frame. Now, if we're following on from our Elliott Wave theory structures yesterday, we can see that we hit both our expectations uh, in a very short period of time. Okay, our expectation was to come down towards the 25,475 to 25,586. We can see that we hit this on a low point uh, coming in with a wick at 25,585. Okay, so basically right there on the top, just a little bit deeper than uh, the 1.236 Fib scale. This actually marks the completion of our fifth wave movement. And then we start this move to the upside of our bigger, larger yellow box move. This yellow box up here represents a wave one or wave B position, okay? And is typically between 50 and 88.2% retracement of our entire five wave structured move to the downside. So we came into this area and got rejected as you would expect. This happened at about 11 o'clock last night, UTC plus one, so UK time. Um, and basically slipped down. This basically was the battle of the bulls and the bears, right? We can see price coming down, price going up, basically trying to get that weekly close position, which we'll talk about in a moment. And um, so for the most part, we tapped into this area. I don't think we're done just yet, though. I suspect we've still got a little bit deeper into this yellow box uh, before we can kind of say that we're done with the correction upwards. Ultimately, this is 25,951 to 26,322. This is the area that we're expecting. Now, we would not expect price to go up higher than 26,000. 437 due to a five wave pattern like this. If you start with five waves, you must end in five waves, right? And so there's very uh, few patterns that have a, a sort of start with a five wave structure and uh, do not end with a five. In fact, there are no other, no, no patterns that start with five waves and do not end in five waves. And so we should not be looking to pierce higher than $26,437. If we were to do so, then we would have to consider this a part of either a irregular flat correction or a running flat correction. And we'd have to consider the ABC structure that led into this pattern here, okay? Because we'd have to kind of re reassess where we actually are on our journey uh, if we were to go up higher than 26, uh, 26,437. OK, so we do not expect to go higher. If it does, it means that we've got something wrong earlier in the price action. So we obviously have our targets for now, basically between 25,951 and 26,322. But like I said, I don't expect it to be a straight move up there. Uh, as we can kind of see here, we have this interesting pattern to the downside. It's possible that we correct down a little ways before we rally on up. Ultimately, though, from our current pattern, if we keep our existing low here, uh, we'll be talking more around the 26,108 to 26,214 approximately. And I'll go ahead and just throw in a little yellow box inside my yellow box. And that's the area that I think we're likely to revisit. Okay, so let's go up into the daily time frame. Okay, keeping this on point and keeping this incredibly slick. Uh, let's see what's going on. So we have a five wave pattern to the downside where we're expecting a five wave structure within our fifth wave movement. Now, this five wave pattern, we have already completed wave one. We think we've completed wave two. And what we've just completed with that five wave structure is a potential wave one of a wave three of a wave five. Okay. And so if we were to then start breaking this down even deeper on the daily time frame, we've completed the wave one. That's the, the move that we just saw. The little move coming up is our wave two. As I said, it could be a B wave, but I think it's a wave two. We'll then come down into a big wave three, up for four, down to five. And that will be basically our wave three. OK, of our wave five. So we know where we sit within our structures at the moment and everything is kind of playing out quite nicely. And as you would uh, typically expect these things to kind of go. 
Okay, and so our fifth wave target on our daily time frame comes in at 22,693 to $23,874. Okay, and this is the area there where we're likely to then see a significant surge back to the upside, where we'll probably be revisiting $27,000, uh, and previous area of resistance is looking quite interesting. That, and that one actually comes in at 28,294 to 29,176. So we know that there's a good structure here is formed. We're bearish on this one. We cannot be anything else until proven otherwise. At the moment, if we want to break our structure, we need to see price move up higher than $28,588. A move higher than $28,588 without first coming down to $23,874 would essentially break our bearish structure and we can start moving up in a more bullish way. But until that happens, unfortunately, things are looking bearish. And that's not to mention the death cross. Okay, a death cross is essentially short term price action moving uh, go, or going lower and crossing lower than the longer term price action. And that is what we see here with our EMAs. Our EMAs are a 50 EMA, which is your short term, and your 200 EMA, your long term. Now, you can do this with uh, SMAs and MAs as well. And some people like to mix these up as well. So you might have an EMA on one of the lines, like a 200 EMA, and then take a 50 SMA. Uh, and then when they cross, that becomes a death cross. There's many different variations of it. But essentially, nuts and bolts and the kind of the basics are that the short term price action crosses lower than the longer term price action and we're on a path here for a death cross okay and we can see that within our emas right here okay whether or not i throw on a uh, actually why not for for giggles why not let's go ahead and do that um, let me just check to see that is our 50 EMA here. Uh, sorry, that's our 50 moving average right here. And you can see how it's cross coming down very steeply and looking to cross uh, the 200 EMA. Even if we throw in this one right here, this one being our 200 MA, so a 50 MA uh, crossing there than the 200 MA. And you can see again, the cross is imminent. So whether or not you're using MAs or whether you're using uh, EMAs, we are all right about to see here a death cross. And that is going to have negative implications for the price action of BTC. Now, this is not because the actual cross is meaningful. It's only showing you what's happened before. It's only really going to have an impact on the market because of people's overreaction to the term death cross, right? It's going to be heavily publicized uh, once it kind of gets picked up in the media. Once all the YouTubers start saying death cross all over the place, we're going to start seeing people panic and starting to sell. But actually what it's showing you is previous price action. It's showing you what's already happened, but people will react. And therefore that helps give us a bit of a predictability about what is going to happen when this cross occurs, essentially further to the downside. Now, obviously, when I say these things are laggy, I mean that they're laggy on multiple different levels. If we think about it, Elliott Wave Theory has already told us our structure is bearish and we're heading on to the downside. A death cross is basically just going to happen because of how we moved up prior to this move to the downside. And of course, the short term price action looking to move down lower than the uh, longer term price action. However, people will look at that and think, oh, that's what it was. It was a death cross, the reason that we fell down uh, and all these kind of things. But actually, the behaviors are already mapped out. People are now just looking for an excuse uh, to kind of go short on the market. I think that's essentially what Elliott Wave Theory is telling us, tracking the behavior of people. People are not willing to back the move to the higher ground on BTC, and therefore they're just looking for a reason for this thing to move down. And I think that death cross is going to be that. Now, when it comes to a weekly close, we obviously saw another dojo-ish, and I want to use ish uh, there. Um, you can see basically open and close positions in the last three weeks have been very, very similar. They're not exactly a dojo can because there is a little bit of a body to the candle there. Um, but for the most part, we can see that the market's undecided. There's very little movement on the weekly time frame. No one is uh, really being able, or the bulls are not really being able to push price above the weekly 50 EMA at 26,792. And the bears also were unable to push the price down to the 200 EMA at 24,699. However, we can, of course, see that there are some interesting things occurring here specifically with our lower highs. Now, with the lower highs, we do see weakness, obviously, kind of getting uh, some momentum, but we also find ourselves here uh, with higher lows. This essentially is not a good recipe, in my opinion, 
for BTC. So we already know that the Elliott Wave Theory is tracking a breakdown, and I think these trend lines are also kind of depicting this for us as well. Essentially, we might see a little bit of a fake out, and usually what you tend to find is uh, moves to the upside to liquidate any of those short positions before the move to the downside actually occurs. I suspect we are going to be completing the five wave move, uh, that might be a quick move, and then go up more significantly. I think we're in uh, and have the ability to see a pretty significant surge uh, upwards already back to the previous area of resistance, as I mentioned, uh, around that $28,000 to $29,000 level. Um, but before we can do that, I think we need to liquidate any potential long. So expect price to go down, then go up. And then once we're up in those higher ranges of resistance, I expect price to come crashing back down once again. So I think that's going to wrap up today's video. If you have found this useful and informative, smash that like button. I do appreciate that. If you are new to the channel, then why not go ahead and subscribe, tap the bell, select all the notifications, and in doing so, you will be kept up to date with everything that we do here at Cheeky Crypto. Until the next one, though, guys, have a fantastic day.